Nez. So today, this chapter is not part of your prescribed book. It's another book. It's the old book that I've used for this because it gives me a clearer indication of what a literature review is. I have already posted for you the slides on Vutela, so you can go and check it out. Also, the recordings of the previous classes are already on Vutela. All right, so let's go through literature review. The literature review you will see is also a section in your proposal a two pager or so or, or not even that long maybe will be literature review and chapter two of your final project that is assignment number three that is also going to be a literature review so all the things that we go through today you need to apply in your proposal in your way of writing as well as in chapter two when you write your literature review so firstly what is a literature review? It involves searching for, reading, evaluating, summary, summarizing as much as possible of the available literature that relates to your research topic in a direct manner or an indirect manner. In other words, remember I said, if your topic is focused on establishments in the Vol region. You don't only have to read on establishments in the Vol region, you can also read about establishment in other sides of the country or in other countries, if that may be. Just as long as you gather information about context and what your topic is about. It can be on different products and in different areas. So it can be directly related or indirectly related to your uh, topic. Literature refers to all kinds of published information, so that might include textbooks, you need to read textbooks on your topic, journal articles, which you find in academic journals. You can, uh, I think maybe the PR students might also refer to um, newspaper articles or magazine articles, that type of media to gather information. If they do content analysis, they need to read that type of information. So anything that is published, that is literature. Anything that you can read that is published in a type of, a, in type of media you can um, refer to. You have to show in a literature review that you have read widely and have researched the topic as much as possible. So when I'm reading a literature review, I want to see that you've included all the most important concepts that is related to your topic in one way or, a, or another. So I want to see that you understand the entire context where your topic fits in. So you need to read everything possible that you can read about your topic. You read it and you can evaluate, is this important to include in my literature review or is it not important? Okay. And you can always support, I've included this because this, for this reason, so what have you excluded and why did you not include it then? Okay, so we want to see in a literature review that you have read and that you do understand your topic and everything that is connected to that specific topic. There's a specific process linked to the literature review. You're going to start by first identifying sources that are relevant. So that is where you start typing your keywords so that you can start searching for sources, textbooks and articles that might be relevant. Then you need to assess these sources. You need to evaluate them and see if they are reliable and valid sources. Some sources, Wikipedia, it's not a valid, it's not a reliable source. Why not? Because anyone can publish and change on Wikipedia the content that is on there. If they are an expert or not an expert and they can change the content on Wikipedia. So that is not a reliable source. It's not a scientific source as we will say. So don't write to me you have referenced from Wikipedia and don't include that in your reference list because you're going to get a huge red cross acro um, across that. Okay, So, for example, Wikipedia, it's not a, a valid source. Also, when you go to websites, be careful which we websites you use to source. It must be someone that is an expert in the field, someone that is a researcher or an expert in a specific field. Okay. So you have to analyze your sources of information to determine is it usable or is it not usable? Does it contain content that I can use for my literature review? And then a writing, then you have to write a review of these sources to summarize the findings of the literature. So you start by identifying possible sources. You assess if you can use them. Are they valid? Are they reliable? 
You look at the content. Can you use the content? If yes, then you write from those sources your literature review. That is the last step, is writing. So don't just start writing anything that you get on the internet or anything that you get in an academic journal. Firstly, go through the article to determine, is this really something that I can use in my literature review? So you have to work systematically as well when you write your literature review. You have to demonstrate when it comes to the literature review skills in two main areas. Firstly, information seeking. You need to in indicate, or I need to be able to see, you know how to look for information. You know how to use your keywords. You know how to retrieve the most relevant information from an article, from a journal article. Not only that, you also need to do a critical assessment of your articles or of the content that you are reading. In other words, it's not only about giving the definitions of two people. You have to indicate where does these two definitions overlap? Where are they similar and where are they, um, whether they differ from each other? What are the similarities and differences between two def definitions? And how will you use that definition in your specific study? So you need to assess the content and critically evaluate different authors' opinions about a specific topic. It's not just about writing A said this, B said this, C said that. That is listing. You need to evaluate where are they the same, where are they different. Okay. Because it's easy just to summarize. The, the, the trick comes in when you actually assess and critically evaluate and that is where the marks lie to see if you can compare and find similarities and differences and evaluate the content against each other. The purpose of a literature review is to put the research study at hand into perspective. So it provides us with the context of your research. In which context are you doing this research? If you are doing customer satisfaction in the <coughs> tourism industry, we need to context about the tourism industry and about customer satisfaction. And where does customer satisfaction come from? Does it lie in the wider domain of marketing? I think so, yes. Then you put in some background about marketing as well because those things go together. That is the context and that is the perspective what, that we want. Where do you come from with this topic? You need to determine what previous scholars or previous researchers have written about a topic. In your literature review, you are going to refer to similar studies has been done or have been done on the topic and you're going to indicate who has previously researched on your topic. You've already had some taste of that in the problem statement. You need to know who has done similar studies, okay? And that should be listed somewhere in your literature review. I like very much a table where you have your research, uh, um, the different articles with the sources and the titles, the topics that they focused on that are similar to yours so that I can compare easily these ones are same, but it's never been done on this product, or these ones have been done in this region, but never in that region. So such a table can work very nicely to summarize what different scholars. And keep that by nearby. Have a piece or um, a document on your computer. If you come across an article which is related to your title or your topic, put it into your table immediately. As you go along, if you come across an article related, put it into your table so that you keep it up to date so that you don't have to afterwards go and search for the articles again. Okay, so do that from right from the beginning. Furthermore, the purpose is to identify main models or theories that are relevant to your research study. If we think about the topic of customer satisfaction, there are various theories surrounding customer <coughs> satisfaction. Um, things like the serve qual model, service quality model, that is a theory that can be related to customer satisfaction because service quality has an influence on customer satisfaction. Those type of theories and those type of models that are in your field, you need to bring them in because they support your research and it provides us with the context. So you must think about your topic and what theories are related to your topic that was identified by researchers. Then you have to determine what has not been written about your topic you are researching. So always when you write, you will, you will indicate what has been done, but where is the problem 
always refer back to that problem that you have. Yes, you can see that various studies has been done on this topic. However, none of them was in this and this is the focus of the research. Always go back. What was that problem that you are dealing with again um, that you identified at the beginning? A literature review serves as a benchmark against which to compare and contrast your results. So the literature review helps you to evaluate if you are still on track, if you are still dealing with your topic, if you are still trying to achieve your objectives and let your objectives guide you. What is it that you want to achieve? Because what are the questions? Those questions should be answered already about um, in your literature review, uh, um, what other people has also said. So the literature review helps you to think in the right direction because literature review also helps you to identify what are the things that you need to measure if you are looking at a specific topic. What do you need to include in a questionnaire or in a survey um, that you can only do. You can only do a questionnaire or a survey if you've looked at your literature and understand your literature and what is important in the literature. That gives you the guidance on how to measure and what to measure exactly with relating to your topic. So reading is very important when it comes to the literature. The literature review should define the key terms and concepts and not only one definition. As I said, customer satisfaction may be viewed by one person in a certain way, but another person might add something to that definition of customer satisfaction. So list at, at least or indicate at least three uh, definitions of the concepts so that you can at least compare and evaluate those definitions. Not just one, bam, that's the definition. Different people and different authors have different views about the definitions. Indicate those definitions and then uh, evaluate them. Where do they lack? Where do they fill each other up? What can you add as a researcher to the definition of what do you compile is the most important components if you look at a definition. You can derive all those things snooze. <coughs> okay, also the literature review helps you to determine where the relationships are between different variables. So in your topic already you will have variables and your literature review can help you to understand where are the relationship between which variables it narrows down your specific research area of study. So it starts usually, if you write your literature review, it will start broadly. You will start with your industry and then you will narrow it down to what in your industry you are looking at specifically. So every section as well will start more broadly. What is customer satisfaction, for example? And then it will narrow it down to exactly the main components of customer satisfaction. So it will always follow that type of route, starting broadly and ending um, in a narrow manner. The literature review, we can also say, establishes a theoretical framework on which you have to base your research because it helps you to choose your methods and your measuring instruments and all those things. So it is the support for why you are doing things in a certain way. It identifies any relevant theories. We've talked about that, models, case studies, journal articles that may support your research. It helps also to generate new ideas for topics or issues that you could research. Oftentimes when you, re when you read an article, or almost, always when you read an article, you will see there is an indication of what needs further research. What should fo future research also focus on? So it helps you to generate also new ideas for future research. And it helps you also to identify the gaps. We've already talked about the gap. We had to read in order to identify our gap and that was part of our problem statement. I'm not going to do that. So how do we start with the literature review? We first need to clarify how many sources should you include, what type of sources, should you summarize and should you provide subheadings. Now here's how it works. How many sources should you provide in your literature review? In your literature review, I want at least 20 sources. Yes. yes. <laughs> 20 sources in the literature review. So what do you need to do? You need to go and identify relevant sources. 
So there, I've clarified that for you. What types of sources? You need sources that are reliable and valid and scientific, not Wikipedia, journal articles and textbooks. You can also refer to government reports, gazettes or other financial reports, annual reports. Those type of things can also suffice. If there's a speech by a minister which you want to refer to, that is also a source and you can do that. But I don't want things like answers.com dictionary.com. Those things are not reliable sources. So how many sources do you want to like cover for our research? 30 or so? Yes. The what? Academic blogs. Blog, blogs, oh blogs, yes, um. <sighs> is it in, in, in PR, okay, uh, I'm not an expert in the PR, but if you can talk to your mentor and if they agree, then it's fine, if you can, you can use the, the bloggers then, okay. In your literature review, let's go on, you should. Should you summarize and critique your sources by discussing a common theme or issue? That is what I explained. Yes, you should evaluate what different people say about your topic or about a definition. And you should indicate where do they agree? Where do they not agree? Where does the one add to the other? Which one is more relevant to your study? You need to be able to show that you have insight in what you are reading. You understand what you are reading. Should you provide subheadings and other background information such as definitions and history? Yes. It can be useful. Always definitions should always be there. We want to understand the concepts that we are working with. Look at your variables as well to understand the definitions, which definitions to include. And yes, you are going to use subheadings. There is a template for the literature review, and I will uh, load the template as well. I think it's already in the learner guide, the template. The only headings that are consistent for everyone, you are going to start with your introduction. That's going to be your number one heading. And then from there on, you structure your own headings for your literature review. It's like an assignment now. You will say, one, introduction, two, satisfaction, uh, you know, say, say an overview of, of satisfaction, 2.1, definitions of satisfaction, 2.2, factors affecting satisfaction. For example, so that is subheadings. You're going to have subheadings, but you decide what your subheadings will be. I cannot decide that for you. You are going to read. Through your reading, you will identify what are the things that you can see appears com, uh, f uh, throughout and you will include those things in your in your literature review and you come up with headings now what I say with headings as well headings should be specific don't just write satisfaction what about satisfaction the definition of customer satisfaction okay don't just write marketing what about marketing the history of marketing Okay, and if you tell me you're discussing the history of marketing in that section, you don't give me the definition of marketing. I don't want it there. That is the history. Where did it start and how did it evolve? And you can include a diagram there, for example, to illustrate. So you may include also in your literature review some figures or tables to support your, your literature. All right. If you deal with, with a definition of satisfaction, that is all that comes there. You don't include all the factors that affect it in that section because it doesn't deal with that. You stick to what your heading says and be as specific as possible with the headings. Don't be too broad. Okay, so it's the introduction, then all your headings and subheadings in between, and then you will end with a conclusion. The conclusion, remember, does not have references. Let's just quickly talk about an introduction. An introduction does have references, but what comes in an in introduction? Everything that you are going to discuss in your literature review 
that comes into a summary in your introduction, okay? So what I usually do, I will write my chapter without the introduction. I'm writing, I'm reading, and I'm writing then my chapter. Then I go back to my introduction, then I write it, because now I already know these are the things that I have included in my chapter. I go back to my introduction, now I write my introduction. The introduction always ends with a kind of paragraph saying, the purpose of this chapter is to define this, to indicate that, to give an overview of this, okay? You have to indicate to me what is to follow. So the introduction is a summary of everything, with references in that case. The conclusion is also a summary of what you have found, but it does not include the references then. All right, this, the conclusion is absolutely, it's in your own words, uh, based on the chapter. Okay, so those are, that is the layout of a literature review. Uh, Okay, when you also then write your literature review, we've talked about that. Find the models, find the theories that support your topic. Look for literature reviews in your area of interest. Read them to get a sense of the types of theme you might want to look for in your own research. And also ways to find a way to organize your own research. So you can get ideas from reading how, what headings you should include. It indicates to you what is important and how also to write your headings. So it's very important to read, to get a sense of how to write uh, the literature review. Uh, reference sections are excellent entrance points into your own research. If you don't really know where to start, but you have one, a you have one article on your topic that is very related to your, uh, to your topic, go to the reference list of that specific article. There they've indicated what they have read to write that article. You can use the same sources. Go and search for those sources. So you can use that also as an entry point to get to more articles. So look at the reference lists at the end of a chapter in a textbook or at the end of an article to guide you where can you also look for an article. All right. We've talked about the narrowing of the topic. You will always start broad. There are thousands of books or articles on your topic. The, narrow, the narrower the topic, the easier it will be to limit the number of sources you need to read. So you need to determine what is it that you are actually looking for. If you're just going to type in marketing, you're going to get millions and trillions of articles and books, and that's, that's going to be very difficult to work through. Remember, you need to work through your sources. So try to narrow down how you search as well by using specific keywords to help you get the most specific information that you need. Searching for the literature can take a very long time, but you need to make sure that you type in the correct words. Um, so don't just type in customer satisfaction. You will get zillions of things that might not even be applicable to what you are focusing on. Search for something more specific. So narrow down your topic. And very important, current sources. And I think we have talked about that before. We need to use current sources. Five years is okay. If it's five to ten years, it gets a bit risky. But I will accept no older th um, than ten years sources. But remember, there are those cases when you have Maslow. Maslow, when did he come up with that model? That years and years ago, but he was the father of that. So we can still use him, but what do we do then? We support it just with a more recent one to say, this one also used the model of Maslow more recently. Theories can be old, yeah. Some of your theories that you're going to look at are maybe going to be very old because Years ago, they came up with it, so you, but you can still use that in this case because that is a theory linked to your topic, but just support it with at least one recent source of someone who also used that. So try and use current sources as well. <laughs> okay, so we are at the literature review process. How do we then write and go through writing this whole literature review. I will. Um, we'll do it in practicals. Okay. 
firstly, you're going to search. We've talked about that. You will search for information, primary sources and secondary sources. Now, what does that mean? Okay. You can make use of both primary sources and secondary sources. What is a primary source? It's when you read the article of the original author and you reference that author. But that author might also have referenced another author. That is a secondary source. You may use it, but you must limit it. Then you will say, according to Berger, as quoted by Dix. Can you hear? Then it's the primary source is actually Berger. The secondary is Dix. So the original author, the one who wrote the article, that is your primary, primary source. Anyone that that person referenced, that is the secondary source. So you can do it like that, but rather limit it. Don't do it more than twice, I would say. Rather go and search for the original source by looking at the reference list, the reference section. So you have to search for literature. And um, we've done the library training, so you know how to work the, the databases um, and how to search for journal articles. Read the literature with a purpose, so you need to sort through your literature, determine what can you use and what is not relevant. Don't read the whole article if you get an article. Don't just go ahead and read the whole article. You might not even know what you are reading. Look at the title, look at the table of the contents. I read the abstract. When I get an article, what is the first thing that I do? I read the abstract to see if it's relevant. The abstract is a very concise summary of the entire article. If you've read the abstract, then you know what the, the article is about. So don't read through those pages and pages of methodology which you don't understand. I know because I don't always understand that methodology. Go to the abstract, see if it's relevant or not relevant. And then you start sorting. Yes, you, make, you organize yourself. This one is relevant, this one might be relevant. It's a border case or this one is relevant or whatever. So sort through the literature by looking at the headings and the summaries and the things. Another thing that you can also read always is the conclusion. It also gives you a, a good overview of the article. So if you're not sure, also read the conclusion of the article. If there's anything that contradicts your research problem, you can also use that. So anyone that does not agree that your pr research problem is a problem, you can also use that in your literature. So if someone says customer satisfaction has been found not to be related to service quality, you may also use that. But you need to think in your context. Has it been done in your context? And was it supported in your context? Maybe in another context it was rejected that there's a link between those two concepts. But in your context, if you're working on an establishment, it has not been justified, then you can do still the research. But you can also use research that says that those two things do not go together or if it, or if it rejects anything that your topic stipulates. Sources, very importantly, may also suggest for you the methods that you may use in your research. So you may look at different articles, similar studies, to see what did they use, quantitative or qualitative <coughs> methods. How did they measure it? What variables did they look at when they measured it? How did they measure the precise variables? So you look also at articles and literature to understand what methods you can use to solve your problem. Sources should meet the following criteria, the who, what, where, and when. You should be able to identify an author from your source. You should be able to identify what did they research on, what was the research about, where did the research happen, where was the, the population and the sampling, how did that happen, and when, the date of which when the research was conducted. So you need sources that can indicate that to you because that will also be an indication that your source is more relevant and reliable for your research. So also use that when you evaluate your sources. So if you've sorted, you can now start summarizing. You should now have a reasonable number of sources that need to be analyzed and summarized before you begin writing your literature. Now that people, this is just a guideline. It really depends on your own style and the way that you do things. You have all been doing assignments since you were a first year. You know what worked for you and what not. Some people might use a mind map 
to summarize everything about their topic so that they can understand what are the different things that they need to come up with. What I simply do, I would read the articles, I will identify and write down for me the keywords on a list so that I can know this is the things that I need. So I just summarize the keywords that I want to use by listing them. But it really depends on each, each one of you, how you want to sort and how you want to summarize so that you know what should be included in your literature review. Identify which articles dealt with a specific theme or a specific topic or which ones are similar, group those ones, indicate which ones are different between your sources, group the information in terms of topics, themes and arguments. So look at similar studies, group them together. If they dealt with different relationships, different variables, just group them together please. So how you summarize, that is up to you. And then after you know this, what you should include in your literature review by reading and summarizing, you will now start writing. And your literature review should follow a clear and logical line of reasoning and explanation. Um, you have to begin with appropriate introduction. We've talked about that, which outlines exactly what your literature review entails. That meaning you need to tell me the purpose of the chapter is to give what? To give a definition, to indicate this, to give a history, to make an overview of what those things need to be indicated. This is then followed by the um, different sections of your literature review and then you end with a conclusion. I've already spoke about that. Now what do we say if we, what do we mean when we say we, your literature review should follow a clear and logical line of reasoning and explanation? You have to link your sections. You can't just write without one thing following on the next. If you are writing about the history about, of marketing, for example, you cannot write about 1920, and then you write about 1916, then you go back to 1930, that is not chronological. You need to order your work, okay? Even in terms of different paragraphs, if you are writing about now the definitions of satisfaction, the next section you want to address the factors. Where you end with the definitions, you also have to link it now to the next section. You'll need to say something like, it is clear from the definitions that customer satisfaction consists of various components. Therefore, an overview of the factors affecting satisfaction is needed. Then comes the next heading, factors affecting customer satisfaction. Can you hear how I've linked that two sections? And that is what we mean with a logical line. It's a, it should read easy, people. It should be like a story I'm reading. It should flow. One thing should follow on the next and should flow from the next thing. When you have a diagram, a table, a graph, a figure, a photo, an image, anything of that sort, you always need to refer to that photo or that image or that graph or whatever and you need to explain that. You cannot just leave it hanging. Table of factors. You need to explain each of the factors in that table. Okay, and you need to name your table figure or table one and give it a name. Those things I will all show you um, in the practical class as well. But those things cannot be left hanging. So read your own work. If you've written something, read your own work with a critical eye. Give it to your friend to read so that they can also say, how does it read? So that you know you need to improve or there's something that doesn't make sense. It must be logical. That's very important. Each section, if I can just say that, if you have your introduction, each or your, your heading, each heading must have a kind of an introductory sentence. Then comes the, f the, the crux of the matter. And then comes a kind of a conclusion sentence. So you can say, customer satisfaction is important. There are various factors affecting customer satisfaction. For example, you indicate those ones. It is thus clear that various factor has a critical role to play in terms of ensuring satisfaction. Can you see you have a kind of an introduction in a paragraph? Then you have the crux of the matter. What is it that you're actually addressing now? And then you're concluding on that. And that also helps us with the flow. Linking, linking of sections. Um, I must give you a list of words that you can use. Using words like however, furthermore, in additional. In additionally, those things need to be used to encourage the flow 
of your yes. entire document. Find a focus when you are writing your literature review. Don't, do not simply list. Don't only list. Anyone can list the sources. As I said, you need to evaluate your sources. Not only list the defini definitions, but evaluate your definitions. Read widely. Uh, do they present one or different solutions? Do they reveal a trend in the field? So if you find different sources that indicates that quality uh, has an effect on customer satisfaction, you will say that it is clear from the above mentioned that quality has been a supported factor affecting customer satisfaction. So try and identify trends that you can see, things that are similar or things that are different and that also different for, differ from your context. So what did different people say? You need to critically assess. I cannot say that enough. Consider how you will organize your entire literature review. So what are the most important aspects or topics that you need to include? Um, and what, in what order should you present? Where should you start? Um, my advice is that you always start either with your history, a kind of historical background of something, or with definitions, because that gives us a bit of, of context into your topic. So consider how you will start and what headings you should have. Develop an organization for your topic at a global and local level. What does customers, um, how important is customer satisfaction globally and locally, narrowing it down to your specific field of research? Um, and see, how, yeah, organizational framework, how are you going to um, organize, basically, your literature review? So that does not have to be set in stone, and that thing is flexible. If you see later, but I wanted to include this, you go back to that framework and you just include that and see where it fits best. So this can change throughout, and your mentor will also advise if you need to swift or switch things around or include something extra or take something out that is not relevant. So... Um, but organization in your literature review is very important. <coughs> what you should keep in mind is that you need to support, use evidence, that is your, your referencing. They should support everything in your literature review is supported by a reference. You must get it from some kind of source or a reference. Be selective in what you choose to use. Make sure that it is relevant and reliable and that it is current to your research. You may use quotes where you put it in inverted commas, the quotes and the source, but also it should be limited. Not too many of them, um, not more than two, I would also say in that chapter for the literature review. The quotes, use them sparingly. Use caution when paraphrasing as well, with the, as, well as with the quotes. Um, avoid plagiarism. We all know that. We've talked about that. And read your own work. Revise your own work. Give it to someone to read so that you can improve on your own work because it will not be perfect. Even when you submit, it's not going to be perfect, but we can come as close as possible to perfection. Plagiarism, we've talked about several times already. You already know that... Even in your literature review, you cannot use anyone's exact words without using a quotation mark and uh, giving a citation or a reference. It's not acceptable to edit or paraphrase another's words and present the revised version as your own words. You still need to uh, reference that work. And it's not acceptable to present another's idea as your own, even if you use totally different words to express those ideas. So even if you rewrite the words and you don't reference it's still plagiarism so even if you think now I've written it in my own words it's not my own work it's not your intellectual property it is the property of someone else and you need to reference that as well um, so uh, we reference people who are experienced in the fields and who have researched on topics and that is a literature review. So the purpose of the literature review is to get you reading everything about your topic, getting you to understand your topic, the variables involved in your topic, getting you to think and assess works on your topic, and summarizing, giving us the context of your topic. 
So we will go through um, some examples in the practical class so that you can see what is good writing and what is not good writing in terms of literature review. What is very important, and I cannot emphasize it enough, is I need you to critically assess and evaluate your information that you get. I need you to organize and write in a logical way. And I need you to include all the aspects that are important for your topic. It needs to be comprehensive. Okay, so um, there's class tomorrow and Thursday in uh, M000 in the research hub. We will go through the template. I'll again just put up the class lists because not everybody attend all three sessions. You'll only attend one of the sessions. Uh, mm. Uh, I'm not sure if Professor Dickies is done with her marking yet because we were waiting also for some of the supervisors to still submit the project. Some of them are still with the supervisors, but I have received mine. 